I think it's a privilege to live in Dolston, first of all, because it's, it's the centre, I mean, it's, it's quite a um, central place in Hackney. And you need to think that you've got so many advantages. We've got the train, we've got the market, which is always uh, something so nice to have. We need to say that nowadays it's not been the same. So the negative things will be like this area is uh, completely in the middle of a, um, quite a big development. Yeah, they're going to build a tube station there, yeah, without a doubt. In a way it will be good, but in other ways probably not. 18 months ago we learned that a lot of the land and buildings in the area were being sold by the local council um, to private developers. And we were very concerned about this and the future of the area because they wanted to demolish a lot of the buildings and build uh, skyscrapers, tower blocks of up to 18 storeys, but it wouldn't meet the needs of the local people. club uh, called the Four Aces where everybody who was anybody played. This building here is um, was the first, well the earliest surviving surface building in England and was built on the site of uh, the oldest houses in Dalston which were built in 1820 and this building was built in 1886 as a circus and in the when it first started it used to have elephants and circus animals performing here and um, it was a very popular place with up to 5,000 people attending the performances and since that time it was then converted in about 1898 to a Victorian variety theatre. It was also very popular with the actors coming from central London to perform here in Dalston and then in, 18, in 1920 it was converted to a huge cinema of 2,500 seats. It was the biggest cinema in England. They said it was the biggest cinema in the British Empire. And then finally, in, a, in 1966, it became a nightclub um, celebrating uh, really black music. And they brought Stevie Wonder over here in 1966. Otis Redding came here. Bob Marley played here. All famous artist Desmond Decker played here and it became a very very popular venue for local people and um, finally uh, they took over the main building and you had concerts of three four five thousand people used to come here every week so it became part of our cultural tradition in the area. 13 trees planted here that are a memorial to the people that died in the New Cross fire uh, in the 70s, which was um, a fire where a lot of a lot of black people died that people thought was a was a racist attack, and there were trees planted here as a memorial, which if they make the development, the trees will be cut down. Um, I've been there from 1963, and I'm still there. I plant those trees there when it was in 1981, 25 years ago. And you can see how tall they are. And the council technically give a guarantee that they're going to either leave them there. A group of buildings just down the road here that were very, very old, built in about 1826. And they were sold to a private developer based in the Bahamas. Um, and one by one, the buildings started to catch fire and burn down. The people who worked, had their businesses in the buildings had to leave. And the, the street became very derelict. When we came in, was was very badly damaged, really wrecked. The council had taken out the stairs and uh, for about five days we were climbing to get from the ground floor to the first floor we had to climb. We've, we've put in a new staircase so now so now we've got stairs but in, in general the, the building was really destroyed. The toilets and basins had all been smashed by the council and the uh, also, it was very, very, very dirty.
parents. She's not doing it for this person, that person, this or other. You know, she really believes in this stuff. And it's been very hard not to be able to kind of talk more to people and say, look, this is happening. She's up there. She's trying to stop this. Like, bring more attention to the issue. We're also against the development because the development is just going to be luxury flats and shops, which we don't need. And I'm not going to do anything to resolve any of the... It's not going to resolve the housing problem. It's not, it's not going to resolve anything for the neighbourhood. Uh, High-rise flats again but not for local people. And the concern is that every week I have people come into my office wanting help because there are families of maybe two adults and four children living in two bedroomed flats, overrun with damp and mold. Children have asthma, no room to do their homework. And this is a common example in this area, which is a very poor area and there's a desperate need for family accommodation, for accommodation of three, four bedroom flats. But none of the proposals that we've seen uh, contains um, anything like uh, the numbers of flats of that size that we need in the area. And so the concern is that local people are actually being forced out of the area and families are living in increasingly overcrowded conditions and the, the proposals are not going to lead to regeneration. The council's proposals are not going to lead to regeneration of the area and the concern is that we could end up with families living in high-rise uh, tower blocks in totally inappropriate accommodation and that's just going to increase the spiral of poverty in the area instead of bringing prosperity. They're committed to a, a, a program of selling things off of privatising, of making it difficult for poor people to be in Hackney. And I think that's what we need to be looking at because, you know, the whole thing about people occupying occupying the theatre is the people of Hackney need to, need to be looking at the, the way forward for Hackney. We need, we need to be saying what we want in Hackney and we need to be looking at ways we can get that. And, I, and I'm not entirely sure that, you know, kind of writing to the council and just, you know, doing that kind of thing is, is going to do that because I think it needs a mass campaign and we need to make it as public as possible. Voilà, il y a un très très bon café, du bon thé, faut venir, voilà, you're welcome in the Sun Theater. So, I don't know, blame the government, gangster rap, Eminem, who else? <laughs> <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs>